Hey guys, it's Mavis and in today's video we're going to be looking at the pH levels of some cleansers. Now if you're wondering why the pH level matters for your cleansers, you're in for a very basic science lesson. Coming from someone who flunked both sciences of um, chemistry and physics, trust me, this is one basic science that you'll be able to get and it affects your skincare routine so much. Our skin has a natural pH level of anywhere between 4.7 to 5.7 and there is a protective layer known as the acid mantle that is made out of you know, your skin's natural oils, uh, fatty acids, old skin cells, and this barrier basically protects your skin against um, the nasty stuff like allergens, bacteria, viruses, and pollutants while keeping the moisture level of your skin as it should be naturally balanced. So when you use a cleanser that is not within the suitable pH range that uh, for your skin, you, you risk disrupting that balance and that barrier, uh, the protective barrier. So you make it, it, it makes your skin really vulnerable to a lot of bacteria, for example, like the bacteria that causes acne. So we don't want that disruption happening on our skin. So the ideal pH level for your cleanser should be something that's very close to that of your skin. Um, a little bit acidic, but definitely not so much that it irritates your skin because anything above uh, I think 6.5 to 7 has a tendency to strip off everything on your skin, including that very good natural barrier that we want, we definitely want on our skin. When you think about it, water is at a pH level of 7, so we don't want something that's neutral on the uh, pH scale, we want something that's slightly more acidic. So if you ever wash a face with your normal cleanser and you get that squeaky clean feeling, that's not something that's good. We want something that feels like something that leaves your skin feeling like your skin, just slightly cleaner after you wash your face. And that concludes my science TED talk. I'm going to be testing the pH levels of six cleansers today, and they are all powder cleansers. Now, this is a new type of uh, cleansers, I would say because they are designed to be slightly acidic to help support your skin's natural turnover cycle. So as, as you're washing your face, you're kind of helping your skin shed the unwanted dead skin cells a little bit. Skin will be smooth and have like less dead skin cells on it. So it's a very light form of exfoliation while you're cleansing, basically. Um, a lot of these cleansers can be called uh, or they are called or they will include the form, uh, any form of enzymes in their formula. And these are the ones that I'll be testing today. The first is the Fankel Facial Washing Powder. Now this is a very popular product in Asia and has been so for a long time. The first key ingredient in the Fankel powder is sodium cocoa glutamate. This is uh, a mild cleansing agent it is a SLS that has been approved by Ecoset. The second is Manitol, which functions as a humectant or skin conditioner. The third is corn and rice starch, and these are the enzyme exfoliants that comes from corn and rice, obviously. And then the last key ingredient in this product is algae, which is an emollient. Here is the full ingredient list. This cleanser is free of preservatives, fragrances, artificial colors, petroleum surfactants, and ultra-absorbing agents, whatever that means. I'm just going to go quickly into my testing procedure for the pH levels. Um, as these are in powder forms and typically not what or not how you use them, uh, I'll add some water to the, each of the products and then I'll test with pH sticks. Very simple testing procedure. Um, sorry for the shaky hands. So for the Fankel powder, the pH levels are coming at a 5.5 or slightly lower. It's definitely closer to 5 than 6. So this is a good pH level and we like this. A quick review on the product. Uh, this product has one of the best textures of all the powders. Um, it is one of the most finely 
meal cleansers I've powder cleansers that I've used and I really love it it makes it so easy uh, to emulsify or foam up this has decent cleansing and doesn't leave the skin stripped however uh, it is not the most affordable product and because Fancal doesn't use preservatives in their products uh, you're not really supposed to keep them well, basically supposed to use them within 30 days of opening the product. The second product is the Tussu Wong Enzyme Powder Wash. This has been one of my holy grail cleansers for the past four years, I would say. So I definitely love this product. The key ingredients in this is cornstarch, the enzyme exfoliant uh, that comes from corn, badger oil, which is a con skin conditioner, uh, it does this with unsaturated fatty acids and comes from badger. So unfortunately, there's not a lot of uh, information about this controversial ingredient, but there's not a lot of uh, research or anything done on this, but so far, there doesn't seem to be anything bad about it. Um, the third key ingredient in this is papain, which is a exfoliant that comes from papaya. So this is uh, one of the I think ingredients that a lot of people might find a bit irritating might be a little bit too strong if you have sensitive skin. Uh, I have okay skin, I would say, and I definitely do not find this irritating. I use this on a daily basis and my skin is happy with it. This is the full ingredient list. As you can see, this does contain uh, SLS and fragrance. The pH levels of this comes in at a 5, so it definitely is quite uh, acidic or at least, at least a bit lower than the Fancal powder and that means it is slightly more exfoliating for your skin. I find my skin really smooth after washing this and it doesn't seem to be irritated, but your mileage may vary. Quick review of this product. This is one of my favorites because it's so affordable. Uh, a bottle of this lasts me, I think, about two months with daily use, and it's very accessible if you can get, uh, if you have access to, I guess, online shops uh, from Korea. This also has this and cleansing that doesn't leave the skin stripped at all. The major thing I would say about this product is its giant grain size. So I think some people like to use this um, without fully emulsifying the whole product on the skin so that they get more of that exfoliation. Uh, I personally kind of um, like to get rid of all the grains into a, a foam before I put it on my skin and that does involve quite a bit of elbow grease in the shower so that's like a, kind of a bit of a negative side of this product um, and of course it contains fragrance and SLS but I personally do not smell anything from this product when I use it. The third is the Leaky Ham Life Enzyme Wash. I'm pretty sure this is the same brand as the LJH Tea Tree Essence uh, that everyone loved like a couple of years ago. I think they went through like a major kind of rebranding exercise, but um, when you search for the brand, it shows, kind of shows the, um, the old brand old brand's name, so I'm guessing it's, it is the same brand. The key ingredients in this wash is maltose, which is a skin conditioner and humectant that comes from natural or synthetic sugar, um, cornstarch, which you have seen before in the previous two products, is the enzyme exfoliant uh, in this product. Again, sodium cocoa glycinite. So this is a the mild cleansing agent that was also in the Fancal product. Uh, and then this also includes ferment filtrates, which strengthens skin and comes from yeast and bacteria. This is the full ingredient list. Uh, as you can see, there are a bunch of essential oils like orange oil, orange peel oil in there, uh, and citric acid. And this, I don't know why they need essential oils in a cleanser but I didn't notice a fragrance or anything when I use it. And I don't really like the idea of having oils in a product when they don't have to be. Maybe it's just me. Again, the pH results of this is five, 
very similar to the Tusum Wong, slightly more acidic and will definitely tend to be a bit more exfoliating for your skin. Um, a quick review of this, it, it is also a very fine, easy to foam powder. I love using this. Uh, same as before, it gives a very, very good cleansing without leaving your skin stripped of its natural oils. However, this product is quite pricey and it is in a tiny packaging and it's also not easily purchasable, so it's not very accessible. The next three cleansers that I'm going to be testing are actually from capsules. So capsule cleansers have been quite popular in Asia in the past few years just because of how convenient and how easy to use they are. And we're going to look at the pH levels of this very popular capsule cleansers. The key ingredients in this powder is talc, which is an absorbent uh, that comes from minerals, um, cocoa, isotope, Thionite, which is the cleansing agent uh, and made from fatty acids, olefin sulfonate, which is a cleansing agent that comes from coconut, and protease and lipase that are enzyme exfoliants. The olefin sulfonate is a, has been flagged as a cleansing agent that may be slightly irritating to skin. Here are the food ingredients. The Lisage cleanser is also free of fragrances and artificial colors. As we test the pH result, it comes in at a 6.5, which is definitely more alkaline or basic than skin. Uh, this is kind of on the high end and it's not really that great for your skin to always be using something at that level. A quick review of this product, it is a very, it has a very fine, easy to foam texture. I definitely love the feel of it. It is obviously travel friendly. Um, you will never spill this since they're all sealed in little containers in uh, single servings, I guess. Um, you you basically have to just take bring like um, the the portions that you need for your trip, and you know there's no like decanting at all into like little bottles. Um, however, this does dry skin out because of the I guess talc as the top ingredient and of its uh, slightly higher pH level. And it is also quite pricey. So if you do the math, it's about $26 for 12 grams of product. So yeah, and of course, not to mention that while it is very convenient um, and very a bit of a novelty, I would say, it is quite wasteful packaging. The next capsule powder I'm going to be testing is the 20 Mal Clear Powder. Uh, unfortunately, there is no ingredient list available. I've looked everywhere uh, and they're just not there. So from the 20 site, this is what I got. Enzymes that cleanse unwanted carotene and pour dirt smoothly and smoothly. Asterix face washing powder. Um, so this contains protease as well as lipase, which is very similar to the least stage ingredient list. When I was looking at all the ingredients for the products, I realized that the three capsule powders I have are all produced by the same parent company, uh, Knievel. So I'm going to guess that the ingredient list will be very similar to the first capsule cleanser. The 20 Mount Clear powder is also free of alcohol, artificial coloring, fragrances, and parabens. And the pH testing comes in at 6.5, same as the Lisage, uh, definitely more alkaline than we would like. The review of this, I'm not gonna keep repeating myself because they're very similar. Uh, the kind of wash that you get is uh, it's not too squeaky clean, but it's definitely like squeakier that you would like on your skin. So it definitely is not great for your skin's natural balance. The last cleanser is the Knievel Refreshing Powder Wash. The key ingredients in this are the same as the Lisage with talc, cocoa isothionate, olefin sulfonate, protease and lipase. Here is the full ingredient list. And the pH levels, surprise surprise, comes in at the same as the two cleansers above. So now you kind of know that capsule cleansers are, you know, not that great. I, I did not review or test the more popular, uh, what is that brand? I'll put up a picture of it here, but 
I have used that before and the experience I had with it is very very similar to the other capsule powders included here just in case you're thinking of trying it out so yeah these are the results after testing six pH cleansers uh, that kind of uh, help exfoliate your skin while cleansing and I would definitely recommend that whatever cleanser you're using whether it's a gel or cream of milk one that you definitely do like some testing to make sure that it is suitable for your skin and it's not causing more trouble than um, it's supposed to be. Uh, you know, cleansers are supposed to clean your skin, not strip it. And that's it. If you like this video, do hit the subscribe button or the like button and I will see you in my next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!